Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I'm a beauty enthusiast and consultant who loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and today we have the new Patrick Ta blush and highlighter palette, okay? You all said you wanted to see it in action. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do tons of comparisons with this blush palette, with his other blush palettes and other blushes that I do have. So stay tuned for all of that. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get right into this video. Okay, so let me just tell y'all, I was not about to get this palette, okay? I saw it and I said, I have so many Patrick Top blushes, I really need this. But then I said, you know, this looks a little light. So is this really gonna do anything for my beautiful melanated complexions? And that's where I felt impelled. Let's go and see what this looks like. So I have to be careful because this came with this um, highlighter shade actually out of the pan, it falls out. So I'm gonna hold it like so. But this is what the palette looks like. I believe it retails for $58. It is available on Sephora as well as the Patrick Ta website. It does come with three cream shades. So we have two cream blushes and then a cream highlighter. This cream highlighter formula is different from these other two cream formulas. And it's also different from the cream formula in his traditional blush duos and the blush palette. And then we have three powder products, two blush products, and then a highlighter product. As with all of his palettes, it does come with this sleeve right here to protect the cream products, which I do like. Oh, see, there we go. <laughs> Terrible. And it does come with a nice size mirror here. The outer packaging of this palette is actually more matte. It is not as glossy as his other palette or his other duo. So I did want to point that out. I thought that was pretty interesting. So this is a limited edition face palette featuring two new cream and powder blush shades and a debut of a new highlighter duo. So getting into the actual swatches of the shades, um, just because this shade is a little <laughs> delicate and it keeps falling out, I'm just gonna swatch them in the order that I apply them with the demo that you're gonna see. So I'm gonna go with this color duo first, then this one, and then this last. So first we have Giving Flirty. And this shade, I was like, I really, really like it. I love a good, you know, bubble gum shade that's not too ashy looking. This duo is described as a soft pink. So there's the powder version. So we've got Giving Flirty. Then we have next Giving Sunkiss. Patrick Cha describes this as a golden peach. And then lastly, the new highlighters, we have Giving Glossy. So he describes this as a transparent gloss. This is the actual gloss shade. And this literally is gloss, like it is gloss, really no color at all. And then the Giving Glossy powder shade is described as an opal pearlescent. Right there. So here are all the swatches in this new blush and highlighter duo palette. Like I mentioned before in the beginning, the cream formula is different than the cream formula in his traditional color in his other palette. So let's look at volume one. I didn't even say the newer one is volume two. This is volume one. So if you take a look at the two, I'm just gonna take out the highlighter pressed powder shade since it keeps falling out because I don't want it to break. But if you take a look at both of them, and I'm hoping that I can get these up so you can see them, you can kind of tell a difference in how the cream blushes look like just by looking at them. But I am gonna swatch them next to each other so you can see what the shades look like, the comparison of depth and all of that. So I'm gonna go just in this order here I don't remember the names of these shades. So the cream formula in the volume one palette is going to be less emollient. So here is going to be that first cream shade right here. And it's going to be more pigmented or it's gonna have more depth of shade. I should say that more depth of shade. Um, so this palette right off the back volume one, this one right here is definitely going to be better for my beautiful people with deeper complexion. Here is the powder shade swatched to the corresponding cream shade. And of course, I'll share with you my thoughts as to which one I like better at the end of the video. You guys stay tuned, come on. We gotta do all the formalities first. Then I'm gonna go with this middle shade. Here is the cream formula of that middle shade. 
then I'm gonna squeeze in the powder formula right here. And this deeper kind of bronzy sun kiss shade, I'm gonna put back here. So we'll put that here and that's the cream shade and here is the powder shade. So these shades right here, you can definitely see are much more pigmented than this volume two palette. And when I saw volume two, I said, okay, you know, it looks like he's trying to make a palette that is maybe more suited toward lighter complexions, more medium complexions, because I could see how this palette volume one might be a little too much pigmentation for complexions that are much lighter or even more toward the fair spectrum. Um, and so when I saw this one, I was just like, okay, if that's what he wants to do, I can totally understand that um, because I understand, even though I'm not a brand owner, I can only imagine the struggle it is to try to create products that involves so many complexions all with maybe one product. I know that Patrick Ta is still considered maybe a smaller beauty brand. So I try to like, even though I'm a content creator, even though I have my own biases, I really am trying to evolve my thinking and try to think like, you know, if I were a brand owner, maybe what is my thought of process when creating products? So I figured, you know, last holiday season, he came out with this really rich pigmented volume one blush palette. Maybe this year he wanted to create shades that were more suited toward lighter complexions, maybe that weren't as intense, but here's the thing, here's the thing. They actually showed up better on my complexion than I thought. So first starting with this, what does he call it? Soft pink shade. I was really impressed with the pigmentation of this one because I looked at it in the pan and I was like, this can go one or two ways. This could actually look quite complimentary against my complexion or it's going to look really stark airing on the side of being ashy. And it actually is not as stark, it's not as ashy or cool toned as I thought it was going to be against my complexion. I could see this shade working for shades of complexions that are maybe just a little deeper than me um, and complexions that are more neutral to cooler tones. I think if you have like a warmer, richer complexion, I'm not sure how this is going to look against your complexion in terms of is it going to show up with the pigmentation that you're going to want to have. Now with this shade in the middle, I think this shade in the middle could actually go somewhat into the deeper complexion shade range, especially the powder blush. It's really beautiful and it showed up a lot. Like I said, both of these showed up much richer against my skin than I thought they would. I thought they were gonna be quite light and granted they are lighter, you know, especially if we're like comparing them to volume one, but they actually do have really good pigmentation to them, which I was really happy about. I was like, okay, this is actually going much better than I thought. Cause I really thought I was going to put these blushes on and I was gonna go, guys, like they really didn't show against my complexion. This is not for us. I already had like a whole thumbnail title, like this is not for us. That That's really how I thought this was gonna look. This actually shows up much better than I thought. And I'm really happy that these shades are buildable. So I'm going to apply just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in with this blush first. You can build them up. I mean, look at that. You get a lot, a lot coming off on the brush all at once. So you can build up these shades if you want to. And that's why I said, depending on how deep your complexion is, and then depending on the undertone of your complexion, you might be able to rock this shade really beautifully. But I think if you have a warmer complexion and a deeper complexion, I just don't know how it would look based on your preferences and what you might like in a blush. So that's what I mean by I'm not sure. And then going into these other, this other shade of blush, once again, we can build these up really nicely if you wanted to. Um, they are going to have some sheen to them. So they're not going to be necessarily the most shimmery type of blushes, but they do have a sheen to it. So they're not totally matte, um, which I'm comfortable with. I, I really like shimmer blushes to begin with. So I'm happy that they're not like a flat matte, but they do have a little sheen to it. Now this excessive sheen, I say excessive, not in a bad way, but this excessive sheen is coming from the highlighter that I had laid down before. Now this highlight, she ain't nothing to play with, okay? I was like, 
<laughs> okay, reel it in, reel it in, but in the best possible way. So this highlighter, I think he did very, very well. I can see this highlighter working for a ton of complexions because and it's so beautiful. So if you look at the highlighter up close, I don't think you all will be able to see it on camera. Maybe you can like, let me try to do this on the back of my hand so you can see. It's got a champagne tone. So he says opal pearlescent. And so the opal pearlescent shade is going to allow for it to not to be too cool toned, but also it's going to be uh, light enough or champagne -y enough to work for lighter complexions, but it's not gonna be so cool that I don't think it will work on complexions that are deeper and richer. Um, this is beautiful. And if you were to blend it into the skin, this is what it looks like. And that, my dear, my dear, is stunning. It is stunning. I really, really, really am enjoying this highlighter shade. I put it down the center of my face. I was like, we're just gonna glow all today and I'm fine with it. Now this gloss shade, let, let me just say, and I just realized I, had, I don't have a no lip color. I was just too excited to film. <laughs> this gloss shade is legitimately gloss, legitimately gloss. Let me just, it feels like a gloss. So the two cream shades in his palette reminded me of, and what is it now? Oh, it reminded me of the cream shades in Natasha Denona's face palettes. I'm going to go grab that and um, show you really quickly. But this glossy shade is legitimately gloss. Like, look, look at this. Look at this. It is, I mean, if I didn't know any better, I might have thought I put on a lip balm, a little lip gloss, a little light layer of Vaseline. Um, and on top of that, when I was applying the blushes, I was like, oh, I forgot with Patrick Ta, you put the powder down first and then you put the cream on top. It does not work with this formulation. So in terms of the Natasha Denona face palette, this um, cream formula kind of reminds me of the cream formula in this palette. This is her Bloom Blush and Glow one. It kind of reminds me of this formulation here, but Natasha's is going to be a little more stiff. Um, it also reminds me of the formula in here. This is her Love Glow face palette. And it reminds me a little bit of this one too. Um, once again, Natasha's is going to be a little more stiff. All right, so I'll put Natasha's formula here. So here's Natasha's cream formula. You can see hers is more pigmented and it's a little more stiff as well. I'll put Natasha's here too. Um, so that's what, that's, this is a, close to a cream formula in Patrick Ta's palette that I could think of in other palettes, but Patrick Ta's is going to be more emollient um, and it's going to be a little more sticky compared in comparison to Natasha's. With the cream blushes, I think you potentially could put the cream blushes on top of the powder blush formula. And the reason why I say this is because when I applied the cream product onto my skin in the demonstration, I had actually already set my face with powder. I put on my foundation and then set my face with powder. And I didn't see the cream blushes picking up the powder or foundation underneath. However, when I went to go put on this glossy highlighter shade, oh, we picked up all the product underneath it, okay? So with this cream highlighter, I would put this on bare skin or I would definitely tap it with the finger and really try to tap as lightly as possible because I was using my finger and even with that, I was picking up my powder and foundation underneath. And then when I put the powder highlight on top, I felt like it didn't blend as easily into the skin and it looked kind of blotchy in that area where the powder and tinted moisturizer had been picked up. So this formula is not going to be the same as the formula in this palette or in his duos where you can just put the powder on, then cream, cream, then powder. Like it, it, we're not finagling it however we want to. I find that it's better for this new formula to put the cream down, powder on top. And even when I looked on Sephora to see how to use it, it said, put the cream down first if you want to layer it and have more of a luminous glow and then you can powder on top wherever you want to apply it. Um, if you all have seen him say anything different, let me know. I went to his Instagram page really quickly so I didn't delve too deep and I didn't see any specific video um, 
showing how he prefers to use it. So if you all have seen it, leave it down in the comment section. I'll go ahead and pin the comment so that we all can be informed. But from what I saw and just based on my own experience, I don't think this formula is going to be the best one to apply the, the powder first and then the cream on top especially with the highlighter. Now let's get into a little bit more comparisons with the other blush duos that I have. So She's So LA is absolutely my favorite, okay? Absolutely my favorite blush from Patrick Ta of all time, okay? And she's like probably top three favorite blushes just of all the blushes that I have. And I'm a blush gal. And so that's a very, very hard statement for me to make. In terms of looking at this She's So LA with the new blush and highlighter palette. We don't see any comparison theirs of, you know, having um, a shade that is similar to this one. And then we get into Oh She's Different. Oh She's Different, once again, I don't see too much of a similarity there between the new blush palette and Oh She's Different. Um, and I highly recommend Patrick Ta's blush formula. It is so beautiful, so beautiful. Do we know her? I don't see any correlation there, and I'm just gonna hold them up so you can see. So here's Do We Know Her. Once again, no similarity there. Then, it, you know, at least I feel it's worth swatching. And then lastly, we have She's Blushing. So this is his newest blush duo that he launched a little while ago. And once again, no similarity there between the new blush shades and this one, which is called She's Blushing. So I will say that I am happy that when he says we've got new blush shades, that I really feel like we have new blush shades. And even when comparing his new blush and highlighter palette volume two to his volume one, we do not see any repeats of shades. If anything, um, we can definitely see that we have richer pigmentation with volume one, but with volume two, this one is going to be lighter, a little softer maybe, because I would say with volume one, even with me, I don't reach for this one a lot unless I really want my blush to be like in your face in the best way possible because these shades are really, really rich. So my recommendations are if you have a deeper and a richer complexion and if you love blush and you really want your blush to pop, I would go with volume one. I think you're gonna get the best payoff. I also feel like you will get the best bang for your buck because you won't have to worry about any of these shades not showing up and working well with your complexion. If you have a lighter complexion, I would say that you could still very much love and enjoy this palette. I would just say you just need to love blush and of course go in with a lighter hand so that you can have the blush look the way you would prefer it to wear. If you have a lighter complexion, light to medium complexion, in all honesty, I think this blush palette will work for that shade range the best because if you're anywhere between light and medium, and I would say, in the tan range, you can get away with all of these shades and not have to worry about any of them not working for you. Bless this, just bless it. Um, so for instance, with me, I feel like I can wear all of these shades very comfortably. I feel they show well on my skin. I like the pigmentation of it. I like the formula of it. So I feel like I can get some good use and wear out of it, except for this glossy shade. I really feel like he could have just left it out because it's not as, user-friendly in the sense in comparison to its other cream formula i'm gonna say that this is you know maybe what some people could consider like a regular cream formula but <clears throat> excuse me but with him because he's made his previous cream formulas to where you can literally apply them on top of powder not on top of powder and they just look beautiful and stunning i think this one is just subpar in comparison to its other formula and these two cream shades i do like them but i really like his cream formula the previous one better simply because it's not so emollient and you really do see pigmentation so if i wanted to wear these shades by themselves i could right they do show up but it's going to just be that light glossy like flush of color i feel like with this newer formula it is kind of sticky so if like my hair got into it my hair is going to stick to it some um whereas his previous cream formula that cream formula was just it's superb it blends in so beautifully it's not hard to work with but 
at the same time, like you don't have to worry about that blush going anywhere, melting away. You know, you put it on and two hours later, you don't see it. Like this cream formula is amazing. And it's by far some of the best products that he has created. So I do wish he would have kept this cream formula and just used the cream formula with these shades. Cause I think that would have made this palette like even better, especially with this creamy highlighter shade. Cause when I saw this, I was like, ooh, a cream highlighter, like that's gonna be gorgeous. And like I said, I just don't really feel like I can do much with it. Like for me, I know I'm not gonna reach for this at all. I will reach for the highlighter shade because it really is beautiful. And I like how it blends into the skin. The highlighter is going to be pretty smooth. It doesn't have any texture, but you do see like shimmer reflex um, on my hand. I don't know if you all can see that but you do see just ever so lightly some shimmer, but the shimmer is smooth and I can get with highlighters like that. So I think the highlighter formula for the most part is pretty smooth, but it can, I could see this highlighter formula being not the smoothest, especially put on top of this cream product. Once again, formulaized. Now, if you had another cream highlighter that had maybe that wasn't as emollient and that it was smooth and not as sticky and then you put his uh, powder highlighter on top, that would be a beautiful combination. And you know, I'm always here to learn. So if you have suggestions, if you have this and you're like, Chels, this is how I use his glossy highlighter formula and this is how I can make it work, let me know. I'm always here to learn. But these are just my thoughts. And so, I do like this new Patrick Ta blush and highlighter palette. I like it a lot more than I thought. Like I said, I already had like my thumbnail in my head and I was like, I'm gonna title the thumbnail, this ain't for us. <laughs> well, I will say this, this may not be for the riches of us, but this is for melanated skin, it is. It just depends on how you like your blush. Um, and I would even say, I would say this, if you have a deeper, richer complexion and you like more of like a hint, of blush, I think you could enjoy this one. Simply because once again, these shades do show up and they are very buildable. Um, so it just really depends on your blush preferences, what you think you might like and what you think you might enjoy. But I do think all in all, he has come out with another beautiful palette. Of course, like I told you, I have my recommendations for it, but all in all, I'm really happy with this one. And I would say, if you're interested in it, if you think you could enjoy this particular palette and color story, I would definitely say pick it up because I think it is beautiful. So let me know your thoughts down below, what you think of this palette. Are you interested in it? Were you interested in it and now you're not? Or you weren't and now you are? Let me know all of that down below. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching, and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye, guys.